Hey guys, I'm going to show you a quick tutorial today using uh, Monk's Active Tiles on how to create a toggleable, interactable trap door that will send you up and down. And I'm going to show you how to do it with just two tiles. So it's really simple, as basic as I can get it. I'm going to use the new crosshead map that I made with uh, Crosshead. He made all, did all the design. We brought it into Foundry and now it's a huge pirate map. So, you know, I showed you these interactions before and I can basically click on these and you can hear in the background some some noise that's being made so let's see how these are built so first of all if i grab the tile itself it's just a trap door this is an asset of crossheads and i've got it set it's just set as a standard overhead tile it's going from zero to infinity so it's acting like a roof tile sitting on top of my deck, that's why. It doesn't necessarily have to be to infinity. And then you can see the config here, but if any token clicks on it, it's going to toggle on or off this tile being visible. It's going to toggle then another tile called the Garrison Trapdoor 1. It's got its own unique code so that it doesn't interact with other trapdoors on the on the map. And then it's going to play this, uh, this sound uh, of wood, something wooden opening up. It's going to restrict it to the scene. So that's it. It just makes itself appear and disappear, plays the sound, and then it toggles another tile um, to be active or inactive. Let's go look at that tile. So this is that tile. Now I could have used, so I could have used a, a regular ladder tile here, which you can use. I just used an icon here in this case, and I gave it this unique code of the trap door. It's also set as an overhead tile. This is going from negative 10 to infinity. Now this is important that this one goes to infinity because it'll only work if my player is on the level that it's on. So, you know, I could also say, you know, to level 10, for example, if I didn't want it to go to infinity, but it just needs to make sure that it, it actually transects both of these levels. That way I only, I only need one tile. Otherwise I have to have two. You can see how else I've got it configured. And then what it does when it's activated by a player walking into it, right? So it actually is activated by the tile above, but it's triggered when a player walks into it while it's active. So if this trap door is open, this is active. If it's active, then it can be triggered and it'll trigger when a player walks into it. It'll play the sound of footsteps, which you heard. And then this is the most important part. It will alter the, the player. So the token that walks into it, uh, it will alter the elevation of that token. And then this is the important piece that you need. I won't try to say this out loud, but it's looking for the entity, the elevation of the entity, that field. It's looking at the value of it and saying, if it's negative 10, then change it to zero. Otherwise, leave it at negative 10. And so that way it'll toggle. So someone can come in with zero or with negative 10, and it'll set the opposite for them. This is a really huge function for you because you can have it toggle lots of different things, not just sending people up and down, but you could have something where, you know, players come through with a, a green tint and they come out a red tint, or they come through small through a portal and they end up large. And if they go back through the portal as large, they come back small. So there's a lot of things that you can toggle on and off using the same function. So I recommend, I'll put this, this function in the video description so you can cut and paste it, but that's what really powers this being so simple and not needing a whole lot of tiles is because it's just aware of your, your player's position and can change it. So that's it. I just wanted to show you that really quick thing today. Of course, you can make a prefab out of this stuff, which I've done, so I can deploy these whenever I want to. I may, if I'm gonna have more than one, I just have to give them a unique, touch that one tile and in its other one to make sure that the code is unique for that. Otherwise, it'll interact with other things on the, on the screen. But that's it. Hopefully that helps you guys do similar things in your maps in the future. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful or if you want me to break down anything else a little bit more slowly. In the meantime, have fun making your maps.